Hey everyone, this is uh, my name is Michael Baltos. I'm the founder and trader at orderflows.com. And today we'll be talking about order flow and how to trade reversals and breakouts. Um, if you haven't seen my YouTube channel, I've got about a couple hundred videos up there. Actually, I think I'm at 200 right now on trading with order flow. And you know, it's order flow is something that it's a skill that you know once you learn it, it's, it stays with you. Actually, most of us already know how to trade order flow. We don't even realize it. I'm going to explain why in uh, in a few moments. But uh, we use order flow every day in our lives. And if you are like most traders, this is how most traders view breakouts and reversals. You know, they, they draw a trend line on a chart and they look for the market to test that level again and either break out or reverse from it. But you know, the problem with that, that is it seems to work as much as it fails. And with order flow, you can actually let the market tell you if the breakout is going to continue or if a reversal is going to be put in. Now, breakouts and reversals are key parts of trading and they should be part of your trading plan. If you've ever missed a breakout that was so obvious that you kick yourself, you have to ask yourself why. And you know, also ask yourself, have you ever looked back at the start of a massive trend and wonder why you missed it? You know, we've all missed trends. I mean, I know I, I, there's sometimes I look at these markets and say, oh, it's so obvious. How can I have missed that? And that's what you really want to um, get beyond. Right? That's going to be the difference between becoming a successful trader and a trader that's just sort of break even, spinning their wheels back and forth. Fourth, you know, successful traders know that when opportunities come, they have to be prepared to take advantage of them. But if you like to hang around, you know, the trading forums online, you know, all day long, you read stories about the trader that, oh, I got in too late, you know, and I suffered a loss, or I missed the move, and I suffered, you know, I didn't make as much money on it because I ended up chasing the market. And that's what you want to avoid as a trader. And today, what I'm going to talk about is using order flow to trade breakouts and reversals so that you don't go miss the move or get in too late. Because honestly, once you start falling into those categories of missing moves or getting in too late, it's going to lead to other problems such as chasing the market or letting your losers run. You're not supposed to let your losers run. You're supposed to let your winners run. And when you chase the market, you're giving up some of your edge in the market. You're giving up profits basically because you, you're getting in late to the market that you're, you are you know, buying at a higher price than you should or selling at a worse price than you should. And you know, the, the whole thing with trading is you, know, you have to have a plan to trade. And you, know, you hear the saying, um, plan your trade and trade your plan. And most traders don't even get that far. You know, then they wonder why they lose. You know, if you start a business, you're going to create a business plan. And trading is a business. And if, if you want to make a living out of it, you have to treat it as a business. And you should have a trading plan. And one of the things about having a trading plan is you have to be able to trade different market conditions. Markets just don't go straight up and down. No, they go up, they go down, they go sideways, and they start to poke up, then they come back down. It's not textbook. So yet for every different type of trading condition, you should have a way to trade that market. And breakouts and reversals happen all the time. You know, when you hit a new high, you know, ask yourself, are we going to go higher? Or if we are, you know, are we going to reverse here? You know, that's, that's a common question that, you know, you have to be asking yourself many times during the day. So now, for those that aren't familiar with me, people that don't know who I am, my name is Michael Valtos, and I've been trading at an institutional level for over 20 years. For eight years, I was vice president of futures trading at J.P. Morgan. Prior to that, I spent four years as a trading desk manager at Cargill, where we literally traded every commodity imaginable and physical contract. And you know, if you're not familiar with Cargill, it's, one, it's probably one of the largest privately held companies in the United States, and if not the world, they've got you know, a couple, 140,000 employees all over the world. They account for about 30% uh, of U.S. grain exports, 25% of U.S. meat exports. But you know, they trade everything: oil, you know, all the distillates, everything. Um, prior to that, I was with Commerce Bank for three years in Chicago as a Eurex trader. We were, you know, one of the original firms to have a uh, Eurex terminal in Chicago. And you know, the, one moratorium on that. So it's one of the few traders actually trading um, Eurex out of Chicago on a domestic terminal. Before that, I was with uh, EDF Man for two years on the global macro desk. EDF Man is you know a big English company, similar to Cargill. You know, they've been around since the 1700s. Trade, you know, started trading sugar. And I started on the CME floor with Dean Witter. And when Globex, the electronic trading market, started up. I realized that you know electronics are going to be the way of the future in the markets. I didn't expect the markets to uh, the trading floors to close as fast as they did, but 
you know, once electronic trading started taking hold around the world, it really, really took off. And I'm not saying all this by, it's not giving you my resume to sort of brag or anything, but I want you to know where my background comes from. I come from institutional side. You know, everyone always says, oh, you got to follow the big money. You know, I was that trader. I was the big money for, for my entire career, most of my entire career, um, you know, trading that big money. So I know how the market moves, how it reacts to the big money. I know how, what the big money does to the market. And what I try to explain to traders, you know, through, um, you know, these seminars and, and webinars is, you know, how to read that, what's happening in the market. And like I said, I've gained priceless knowledge over 20 years trading futures. In 2015, you know, after leaving JP Morgan, I started order flows because, you know, I was trading for myself. I left JP Morgan in 2013. In 2015, I started order flows because I was trading, I said, for my own account and the order flow software out there, the volume footprint chart that I was using was good, but, you know, it didn't. I know that you know computers can do a lot more in terms of analysis of order flow rather than just plotting the information on the chart. And slowly over the years, I've been evolving it into you know different tools that traders can use. Now I have you know many different ways to analyze order flow, and I'm not saying you know, every trader has to adopt everything. No, you have to pick the parts of order flow analysis that resonate with you. You know, for some people it might be one thing, for other people it might be another thing, and I found that, you know, traders can adopt certain pieces of it, whether it's delta analysis or imbalances or point of control, and it can really elevate their trading to another level. And again, you know, that the reason why I created that is because you know, I got over 20 years of experience on the institutional side, and that's information that people, most traders are never going to be exposed to. You know, most traders aren't going to trade more than a 10 lot or a 20 lot, and there's a big difference when you're trading 20 lots as opposed to 2,000 lots. And you know the whole mindset of how it's going to affect the market, how you're going to finesse it into the market, is going to um, affect the market, right? And really, that's what I, I, I hope to explain today is you know how you can read the market, to understand what the big traders are doing, and how the market is moving, and how to read it. But before we begin, I want you to do a couple of things, like being in the movie, you know, turn off your cell phone or put it on silent. More importantly, close Facebook. I know we all love Facebook. You know, my wife is a big Facebook fanatic. I don't know where she gets the time to spend that time on Facebook. And, and most importantly, get a pen and paper handy because, you know, maybe you could pick up a, a few golden nuggets that you can use in your trading today. But before I begin, you know, I'm going to go through a brief disclaimer. I like to go through this disclaimer so people realize, you know, trading is risky. You can lose money. I know a guy, he wanted to be a trader. He went out, didn't tell his wife, took a second mortgage on his house, $20,000, put it into an account, promptly lost 8000 close the account and uh, went back to work in his normal job and didn't tell his wife but you know you can lose you can lose trading and I want people to realize that you know trading is not easy it's it's work honestly and this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only it should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor an investor could potentially lose all or more in the initial investment risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So what you're going to learn today is how to use order flow to keep your trading simple, practical, and effective. You know, keep it simple. Don't make trading something that it's not. You know, don't make it into some something that, oh, it's, it's so mystical that, it, oh, I'll never get it. No, you know, put it in everyday terms and trading will become simple. Trade order flow using what you already know. You know, we all know a lot of things in our subconscious that we go through every day, and you can bring that forward into order flow analysis. Um, how to use order flow to know if there's a breakout or a fake out. And lastly, the most important one is, I, th I think, how to find reversal points in the market with order flow. Because, you know, everyone always talks about, oh, the trend is your friend, but where do trends start? They often, they start from reversals. And if you stay to the end, I'll show you how to get my 150-page book on trading order flow, which is... Uh, all my order flow, my order flow trading strategies uh, put down in paper. It's not a physical book. I'll give you the link to download it. It's a, it's a PDF, but it's 150 pages. So let's begin. Um, part one: How to use order flow to keep your trading simple, practical, and effective. Now, there's basically two different ways to read order flow. There's the dome, the depth of market, the price ladder. You know, jigsaw tool that that's a dome, and the volume footprint chart, which is my order flows trader. Um, you know, market delta, the GOMI, um, 
footprint chart. And all these are really just a way of organizing data that makes it easy to see how limit orders and market orders are affecting the market. So you as a trader can make more informed trading decisions. And you know, like I said, you know, with the advent of personal computers and the information that the exchanges put out, you could really take that information and put it into you know, a better chart, a better way to read the market, better way to understand the market. And this is the dome. This is a ninja trader. And this is just a basic dome. You can get more advanced ones from other parties, but you know it basically shows you the market, the bid and the offer, the size, and size on the bids below or the offers above. And you can see you know what what the volume was traded. Now this is a next chart is a volume footprint chart. Okay. And there's a big difference between a dome and a volume footprint chart. And, and the main difference is a dome you really you know people that trade a dome are really watching the orders as they're going in, not as necessarily as they're trading. I mean, they do watch the trades that go through, but they're, they seem more fixated on the size going in above or below the offers. But a volume footprint chart, you're dealing with what actually trades. So let me ask you, what do you think is more important? Volume that's traded or volume that's not traded? Well, you know, if the market is five bit at six, yeah, I would love to sell at nine, but I'm not going to be able to sell at nine. So I, I could put I could put as many offers as I want up at nine. If the market's five bit at six, I'm not going to get filled. But if the market starts ticking up there, and I'm filled at nine. Okay, now I'm in it. I'm in the trade. I got to make a decision at some point to get out of the trade. And to me, being in a trade is more important. You know, when a trader is committed to a position, that's more important than someone's intention of getting into a trade, because they're not into a trade, so they don't have to think about getting out of a trade when the trade starts going against them. And again, you know, order flow is simply the way orders are executed in the market when they are transacting as they are flowing into the market and being traded, hence the name order flow. You know, from the way orders are being executed, the trader can determine things such as market imbalances, aggressiveness of other traders, determine the strength of a move, and see support and resistance. And there's a few other things, but you know, these are the main ones that can really change your trading. And again, you know, this is a volume footprint chart. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a small snapshot. And what the information is telling you is telling you the volume traded on the bid, the volume traded on the offer. You'll see in a bar, this is what they call a point of control, a POC, which is the point in the bar with the most volume, the price level with the most volume. And you're going to see black numbers. This is the volume traded on the bid. Also black numbers on the offer. But you're going to see blue numbers and red numbers. And what those indicate is either the buying imbalances, the buying imbalances will be blue, the selling imbalances will be red. And what that's telling you is there was more aggressive buying on the offer than what traded on the bid on a diagonal. So you can see 11 against 77 or 9 against 67. The, the buying compared to the selling, 67 bought against 9 lots sold, is more than a certain ratio. That's giving you an imbalance, telling you that there's more aggressive buying or in the case of selling imbalance, you know, 13 against 53 or 14 against 66, there's more aggressive selling going on than buying. So you can see sellers are selling into this bid here at 53 lots versus only 13 lots bought against the offer. This ratio is more than four to one. Usually the, the traders like to use a four to one ratio that if it's above that level, they'll say it's an imbalance. And when you, Take the difference between volume traded on the bid versus the volume traded on the offer. It's going to give you a number. It's going to give you the delta number. And if the delta number is a negative, it's going to tell you net aggressive sellers in that bar. If it's positive, like the middle bar, 117, it's telling you net aggressive buyers, 117 more buyers than sellers. Just like on this last bar, negative 43, 43 more sellers than buyers. There's a couple other delta numbers, max delta, min delta, and the total volume for the bar. But the max delta tells you how strong the net buyers were in the bar. So like this middle bar, positive delta of 140, indicates yeah, at one point in this bar, you had 140 more buyers than sellers. And negative 51 is the min delta, telling you you had minus, uh, you had, uh, sorry, you had, minus, you had 51 more sellers than buyers. The negative delta is telling you that minus 51 here, right? Just as this last bar, you know, even though it was ended up net aggressive sellers of minus 43. At one point, you had aggressive buying. You had 62 lots um, more buyers than sellers. The min delta was minus 47, so it's telling you at, at one point, you know, you had minus 
you had 47 more sellers than buyers. Now, you know, this is just three bars, but then when you start spreading it out, you know, charting it over the course of a day, you know, whether you're using a minute chart or range chart or whatever type of chart you're using, you know, it's starting to give you a more clear picture of the market. And you can see how the market's moving, you know, supply driven or demand driven, where support resistance is coming in. If you have aggressive sellers, you could read the delta, um, also tell you about supply and demand. You know, the market is moving down. You're going to be having net sellers, of course, right? I mean, you should. You know, on a move down, you're going to have aggressive selling. You see the red numbers in here. Even here, you have stacked imbalance, which is, you know, three or more imbalances, one on top of each other. You know, that's, those are signs of a market moving down. Just as a market moving up, you know, you're going to see positive deltas, green numbers. And, you know, point of control. You know, if you watch point of control, it's going to often act as support or resistance for the next bar, right? You can see on this low here, this low right here in the middle, point of control is this area with the uh, box around it. You know, where the price in the next bar traded right down to that level. Next bar, you got point of control here, you got within two ticks of it. The next bar, we got within one tick of it. Even further up, you got this, you know, you rallied up, you got the red bar, then you got a green bar here, point of control right here. Twice you came down with the tick of so it's acting as support, right? This is all information that's available to you as a trader. Whether you want to use it or not is up to you, but it's out there. And if you're not using it, I really feel like you're leaving a lot of information you know, on the table. Everyone always talks about leaving money on the table, but what about information? Because in trading, you know, information is money, right? And you don't want to be leaving money on the table. Now, the second part I'm going to talk about is trade order flow using what you already know, right? And most of us go through life trading order flow in one sense or another, and we don't even realize it. But in, you know, in the futures market, the stock market, the forex market, you know, order flow happens at light speed compared to real life. And you know, in real life, you know, if you're trading order flow, it'd be like, say you wanna buy the, uh, some TV at Walmart, right? And it sells for $450 but you want to buy it when it goes down to, to $400. You're not going to keep going into Walmart every day waiting for the price to go down. But, you know, in the futures market or Forex market, it's just happening. You know, it's a constant bid offer, constant market going up or down. It's just happening much faster. But in real life, you know, Black Friday and Christmas gift shopping season is when most people recognize order flow. You know, it's a time when shoppers realize that demand exceeds supply in a, in a lot of instances. Now, you know, I have a daughter. I've got three kids. One of them is a girl. And you know she loves these different types of Barbies. There's so many different types of Barbies out there, and she wants this one particular one. And I know that if I don't buy it as soon as I see it, chances are I'm going to have a very difficult time buying it because you know all these other parents are going to be buying it for their daughter. And if I don't buy it soon, then I got to go to another store. You know who knows where, you know, how many hours away, whatever to buy it in another town over. And it's like that with um, you know the market. Because you're going to have the time to buy something at either at value or below value that if you don't buy it, eventually you're going to end up paying more for it. And when you start thinking in terms of value, right, think of the grocery store. Right? They have their loss leaders, their door buster sales. Like, for example, a grocery store, you, could, you know, normally a case of Coca-Cola costs like seven or eight bucks. But if they one, you know, they'll, they'll have the, the sale. Thanksgiving sale, put it on for sale for like $4, and you know that that's a good deal. You're going to go in and buy it, and being a grocery store, you're going to buy other things. You know, the other day, I went to a grocery store. I, I went to buy a, a bag of rice. I ended up leaving with, with two bags of groceries. You know, with a bag of rice that would normally cost me a couple dollars, ended up costing me 30 bucks in, in other groceries. And because I'm thinking in terms of value, because, you know, sometimes there's going to be things on sale that I'm going to want to buy that I may not need now, but I, I'm going to, I know it's a good value, and I'll buy it and keep it in the in the pantry for uh, later use. And when aggressive buyers are coming into the market, you know, for example, Black Friday shoppers, I know there's people they wait all year long for Black Friday to do big ticket shopping, you know, buy the TV, buy the stereo, buy things like that. They're waiting particularly for that. They're gonna be aggressive during that time. And why is it gonna be aggressive? It's because they know price is gonna be coming down. You know, talk about seasonals in trading. You know, there's seasonals in shopping too. And you know, another thing is when supply is plentiful, you know, when there's a lot of something on the market, you know, the harvest season, you know, to sell, you know, if, if you have an apple orchard, well, one of the prices is going to be lowest, generally during, you know, when, when you have a lot of apples to sell. 
you're going to be lowering the price to get rid of it. So think about it when you go grocery shopping. Think about it when you buy a car, right? You do the research. You read, you know, Kelly's Blue Book. You read um, Consumer Reports. So you know what you want to buy your car at. You don't know what you want to pay for that car. You go to the car dealership. You're ready to go to battle with the car dealer because you know you don't want to pay a penny more than you think it's worth. Or you know, buying a plane ticket. I do not know anybody that just buys a plane ticket right as soon as they search it, and the, and the first ticket they find, they buy it. No. You're going to keep searching for the next couple of days, trying to get a lower fare. Hopefully, it doesn't go up. If it goes up, you're screwed. But generally, you know, I know most people are going to be buying, checking, you know, every few hours, see if the price is a little bit lower, seats came available. You know, some people cancel their tickets. Price goes lower. Last thing you want to do is sit on an airplane, paying six hundred dollars for a ticket, and the person next to you paid three hundred dollars. You know, that's, that's that's not what you want to do as 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 a person. But you know, so that's how everyday life. That's how you're using order flow. And you know when you hit a support level in the market on a chart, it's obvious. But you know when in the department store, this is what it looks like when you hit a support level. You know everyone's coming in to buy it. Right, demand exceeds supply. But again, you know on a on a chart, especially on an order flow chart, it really becomes obvious because you can see, you can see the strong selling. Right, you can see the imbalances, the red numbers in the bars. Right, the negative deltas. And then what happens? You hit this low, boom! You can start seeing some signs of buying coming in. Positive delta. You know, it went from minus 700 delta. So you know, at one point, you had very strong negative delta, minus 700, and it actually ended up positive, plus 18. So you had a shift from minus 700 net sellers, net buyers came in, bought it all back, and actually turned it positive. Next bar, strong positive delta, 600. You're starting to see buying imbalances coming in instead of selling imbalances. And what happens is the markets move up. Yeah, you know, this is yesterday in the soybeans. Right, this happens daily in every market. You know, not every day you got the same example but you, know, you, you see how supply and demand in the order flow and how to if you know how to read the order flow you can pick trades like that but again you know, put it in real life you go into the liquor store you see beer stack like this floor to ceiling what do you think that means does it mean the price is going to go up no what you mean is it's the two best words you ever heard in your life beer sale because you have overwhelming supply to get rid of this beer you know beer has a shelf life you, know, you can't buy beer and store it for 10 years is it's going to go stale? It's going to go sour on you. Well, it's sour, but you know it's going to go bad on you. So it's got to be consumed. So what does the what does the uh, liquor store got to do? Is they got to start lowering the price? How do you to to attract buyers to come in to buy it? Because they got a lot of supply. You know this is how you know order flow appears in your everyday life. You just don't realize it sometimes. And you know with the volume footprint chart, you can see this, right? You can see when beer is about to go on sale, so to speak. You know, this is crude oil. Yesterday, you hit the high. You've seen the heavy volume going through. You're at your high. You've got net aggressive sellers. Even in the bar afterwards, still net aggressive sellers. Next bar, still net aggressive sellers. Next bar, still net aggressive sellers. With all that net aggressive selling, you think the market's going to go higher? It's going to sell off. It's just sell off because where are the buyers? The buyers aren't there. The buyers are coming in and they're getting, you know, they're getting stuffed. You got sellers coming in and selling to them. Selling them all the supply, and what happens is the market sells off 20 cents really quick. You know, this is S and P's. This is um, which one was this uh, back in September when we hit 2500, 2505, rallying up, rallying up. You know, buying is getting a little bit weaker. You got some small deltas in here, 74, 247. You know, on the back of very strong buying. You know, 1600, 1200, 3000 net aggressive buyers. You get up here. Strong volume goes through, very high volume for the bar, 44,000. You get a sign in the order flow that you know there's supply up here. There's there's sellers up here. There's people that with a lot of supply they want to get rid of, and what happens is the market sells off. Now you know when I created order flows, you know one of the things I want to do is make tools that traders can use to analyze the order flow. Because again, you know, order flow for some people does not come easy. You, know, you need tools to help analyze the order flow and, and that's what I wanted to do when I created order flows is I wanted to take a lot of the analysis that I would do visually or do on a calculator I wanted to put it in to software that can you know read it for me you know, and this is one of my newer uh, tools that, that support resistance level so I know that boom as soon as you get up to this level I know there's resistance up here that you should be looking to get short and what happens again you know 2504 you know we sell back down to 2500 now 
part, the third part I want to talk about is using order flow to know if there's a breakout or fake out. And you know, this I used to be a big breakout trader when I first started trading. I used to just trade breakouts. Period. You know, that's what I did for about a year and a half, two years. Um, and when they worked, you know, it worked great. But you know, when they did it, I would take a lot of a lot of losses. You know, sometimes I'd get chopped up three or four times in a day. You know, but you know, back in those days, I used to get better trends. Now, you know, anytime a market makes a high, you should be asking yourself, are we going to hire or are we going to sell off? Right, because two things, well, three things, you can go sideways, but you know, eventually you're either going to make new highs or you're going to sell off. And again, with order flow, you can know if there's supportive buying coming in. Right, anytime you get long in a position, what you need is you need additional buyers coming in, supporting that market, giving it that extra push. I mean, you can buy, you know, however many you want, five lots, ten lots, but that ain't going to move the market. What really is going to move the market is other people having the same either the same thoughts or the same reasons to buy. But what you need after you're getting long, you need to see the support of buying coming in if you're going to expect the market to come in. And if you know how to read order flow, when you're hitting a high or a low, you can see either there's support of buying coming in or there's more selling coming in. Or, you know, in this case, what I call this a fake out is you've got your swing high up here, but by reading the delta, you could analyze that, hey, there's some strong selling coming in here, you know, you might want to think twice about buying it, you know, that we're going to go higher. And then you hit it again, you get the same reading in the delta. You know, this tool, this is the delta scalper, it analyzes the delta, the order flow delta, and what happens is you sell off. You get down here, you got another, you got an opposite signal, delta scalper buy, you got stack buying imbalances, um, so you got strong buying coming in. But you know, this second high, there's no reason to be buying it as you're coming back up here. In fact, you got a lot of reasons to be selling it. You know, and, and this is a perfect example of how order flow can help you. Again, this is the delta scalper tool. It reads the delta. So you got three highs here. Which high to sell? Do you sell A, B, or C? You know, you could have sold A, made you know two or three ticks. You could have sold B, maybe made two or three ticks. But C is the one, you know, is, is the one where you're going to get the nice trade. You know, if you took C, this is how C worked out. You know, we went from 154.08 all the way down to 153.28. That's a 12 tick move, you know, as opposed to catching just, uh, you know, two or three ticks if you're good, you know, two or three ticks. Again, not, that's all that this market is giving you up, trade A or B, but C is the one that's giving you the trade. You know, you even come back up here and you can see the price rejection in the order flow. So, you know, you're short, you come back up, you know, you might start thinking, do I got to get out of this trade? But if you can read the order flow, you say, no, hold on. Order flow is telling me to stay short. And then the market sells makes the move finally. This one, you know, we all like to have the moves happen very fast. Sometimes, you know, they take the, the long route to get to where you want to go. It's unfortunate, but you, know, that you can only trade what the market gives you. All right? We all want to have these trades where you get the signal, the market sells off, and then the market rallies. But sometimes, you know, the market does this to you or it just sort of lopes along and then makes the move gradually. So the, the fourth point I want to talk about, and to me this is the most important part, is how to find reversal points in the market with order flow. Because again, you know, people always talk about trend trading, you know, trend market trends 20% of the time and it trades in a range the other 80% of the time. Well, trends start with price reversals, market reversals, you know, and if you're trading in a range, you're gonna have a lot of reversals coming through. So that's why you need a way to understand Market reversals in the markets when they're occurring. Again, you know, markets don't move straight up or down. They're dynamic. And as a trader, you need a trading plan that allows you to take advantage of different market trading conditions. Right? If you're just trading one market condition, you know, uh, trend trading, well, then all the time that the market's range trading, you're not making any money. You're not participating. And you're not catching reversals. If you're just trading ranges, well, what are you going to do when the market's trending? Nothing. You know, or you're not going to miss reversal trades. So you really need you know, a trading plan that covers different market conditions. Again, it doesn't have to be some big elaborate trading plan, 30-page trading plan. No, it could just be, you know, simple one or two pagers. Okay, if the market is doing this, you know, I'll be, I'll be looking for this, or, you know, I'll be looking for reversals when this happens, or I'll be looking for trends when this happens, or I'll be looking for range-bound markets when this happens. But reversal trading, honestly, is a method of trading that doesn't get it to do. You know, most traders, again, you know, just talk about catching trends and writing them because that's where 
the big money is made and is in the trends, honestly. But where does the trend begin? It begins with the reversal. So there's different ways of using order flow to catch a reversal. One, you can look for market imbalances. Two, you can look for price rejection. Or three, price defense. And you know, the reason why it's in yellow is because that's really what I want to talk about today is price defense because that's where you're going to find it most often than not. And what causes price defense is big buyers when they appear in the market or, or big sellers when they appear in the market. You know, big buyers when they uh, when there's a lot of demand and they're waiting for the low price to come in before they start buying it. Big sellers when the market hits a high level and they have a lot of supply and they want to sell it because you know what a market it does market goes up it goes down and the reason markets move up or down is because they're looking for buyers or sellers in the you know to appear and you know Bear Bryant the great football coach for Alabama you know it was quoted his famous quote was offense sells tickets but defense wins championship and you know in trading trading and, and sports have a lot of analogies a lot of similarities rather but um, you know I, I would make the quote is um, price defense makes you makes traders a lot of money because when price is being defended, that's where you're going to get market turns, right? And it's the turns where you could make very good money in the market. Now, there's different ways to see price defense in the order flow. You can see point of control, you know, where it's appearing in the bar. Because obviously, you know, if, if it's appearing on an extreme, that's going to be important because that's where you have the most volume. Delta, you know, do you have net aggressive, strong net aggressive buyers or net aggressive sellers at a turning point, you know, at a swing high or swing low? or supportive buying or resistant selling. You know, that is really, to me, I, I think you know, that, that's the eye opener for a lot of traders in order flow is seeing supportive buying or resistant selling coming into the market. And sometimes it's very easy. Like this is that crude chart from yesterday. You hit that high, you got a lot of volume. You got the strong negative delta, point of control up near the top. Everything is telling you you have resistant selling up in here in terms of the order flow. Um, I'm not going to get into this number 0.67. This is a ratio. This is an order flow ratio that I that I've introduced you know, a few years back that a lot of people have been copying. But what it does is you know, it analyzes the order flow and gives you a number. And if it's a certain number, it's, it's telling you there's resistance selling as well, price defense. But in this case, you have everything, and so it's so obvious. You know, those are the obvious examples. But there's times where it's not so obvious. This is the euro currency yesterday. This is around 12.23 in the afternoon Chicago time. You hit that high at 118.21. And it just looks like a normal high, honestly. But if, if you knew how to read order flow, this is what the move that happened. This is that high right there, right? This is 118.21 uh, all the way up until this morning here when I, I took this screenshot of this chart at uh, 3.50 this morning, Chicago time. You know, 118.21, well, the high, you'd probably be getting short around 118, uh, that is 18, you know, all the way down to you know, low 117.50, you know, from 12.23 all the way up until 2 in the morning, you know, it just went you know, straight down. And, you know, that's why I create these tools is because for some people, this is going to be very obvious, this one, this chart in the order flow. This one, not so much. And that's why I created these my tools to help traders use order flow in their analysis. And whether you're trading your own bar chart and you want to add you know, some pieces of order flow into it, you can do that now with uh, you know a lot of the tools that we've developed. But again, you know which high to sell, A, B, or C. This is what I was showing you earlier. Well, you know, based on the delta, it's telling you you got a reversal about to happen. Like I said, you know you don't have it on A or B. And again, you know you got. This was the move you're looking for. Now, this is, uh, what is this? This is beans. Um, you know, we're selling off, aggressive selling, all negative deltas. Then you get down to this area. Even here, you have resistance selling. You, know, you have this move, start going sideways, but the order flow is telling you, hey, there's still some selling coming in here. Stay short. Then you get down here, and you're seeing some signs of supportive buying coming in. Now, this is the support and resistance level. Um, but it's reading the order flow to tell you that, hey, you know, you've got, you know, these point of controls, even though these deltas are negative, you know, that there, there's something in that delta is telling you that, hey, you know, this is actually supported by buying, even though it's negative deltas, that, you know, you should be considering getting long. You know, sometimes, you know, planes don't land on, you know, make a 45 degree angle 
land. You know, they sort of come in gradually before they land, and you sort of come down in here, just like the markets just don't go straight down and then straight up. Right? They come down and they go gradually, you know, put a, a foundation in, and then they start going back up. And this is where you're going to be getting these swing lows, is where you're seeing supportive buying coming in. If markets drop to a level where buyers are happy to come in and scoop this up in anticipation of higher prices. So, you know, this is why I love order flow so much. You know, honestly, it sounds like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid from the order flow bowl, but you know, it allows you to take advantage of different market conditions because the market's revealing to you um, what the conditions are. And it's not about picking highs or lows. It's about letting the market tell you a higher low is being made and, and you for you to act off of it. You know, or it's telling you that, hey, you know, your high was made up here. You know, all these people, this is the buns, right? We rallied up to this high market starts coming off. So a lot of these sellers that, you know, anticipating higher prices are, you know, realizing prices aren't going higher and they, they start selling. So you got the resistance selling coming into the market, driving the market down. You, know, you, you can see it's starting to happen here. You got some selling about, so they just go sideways in here before it just gets slammed. I mean, look at this. The deltas here are much stronger than they were earlier coming off this high. Why? Is because this mentality of, of traders has changed. Like, yeah, we just hit this high, we're drifting a little bit lower, coming in, some aggressive selling, but then they realize, oh my gosh, we're not going any higher. I gotta get out of these positions where it goes against me. So that's where they get really aggressive and the market drops lower. Now this is the DAX. DAX is one of those funky markets where it can just turn on a dime. You know, I, I just talked about markets don't always come down 45 degrees and shoot straight up. You know, this is a V shape. But this is a market, this is a tool, the support and resistance level is telling you there's very strong buying down here. Supportive buying at this low. This happens to be the low of the day. And what happens is, boom, you shoot straight back up. Um, this is the bonds, right? We hit the high. This green line is our high. We start coming down, testing the lows. Supportive buying coming in. Supportive buying. What happens? Every time you come down into this area, you see the buying reappear, and the market goes back up. And that's how reverses happen. They happen because of supportive buying. Now. You know, here's a this is a nice example I want to show you. I mean, I'm not trying to show you it's a nice example in terms of cherry picking everything, but you know, I, mean, I showed you a lot of charts just from yesterday. I can show you charts, you know, each day. I, you know, that's why I say go to YouTube. It's been a while since I posted some videos. I just haven't had the time, but um, you know, I usually like to post a video a day, just sort of go over the order flow um, with you. But you can really learn a lot from my YouTube channel. And you know, this is a market. Okay, we hit our low. We start rallying. Then we're just going sideways. Well, what's going to happen when you're going sideways? You're not going to go sideways forever. Either the market's going to go up or it's going to go down. In this case, we started going up, went sideways, and then went back up. Well, if you know how to read the order flow, you know that there's supportive buying in here. So even though you're going sideways, there's no reason to be getting short, right? Now, I know people will say, well, you see the price action. You had a low here. You tested that low. Then you went up. Well, you also got highs here, OK? Why aren't you selling? If, you, if you're trading price action, you'd be selling up here, and you'd be missing this move because you'd be selling this high, you know, right here. Then they'll say, well, support becomes resistance or resistance becomes support. Well, yeah, if you're buying up here, you know, you're buying 10 ticks higher than buying down here based on what the order flow is telling you. Order flow is telling you you got some supportive buying coming in, you know, on this move up. Okay, well, think about it. You know, like I said, talking about institutional trading, when you got a big order. You're not going to just go in and blow through the market. There's going to be times where you flex your muscle and you push a big volume through. And that's going to show up in the order flow. So imagine what's happening here. This market's rallying. Boom, market starts moving away. Strong buyers coming in, show some volume. Boom, they buy a big big chunk here. Okay, they don't want to buy anymore because they don't want the just market to just shoot straight up. They're going to let the market breathe, let the market come back down, and they're going to show their muscle again. They're going to buy, start buying, be aggressive, buy big chunks again if they're available. And that's what drives the market back up. Comes back down here, probably buying again here. So they're just giving the support to the market. And that's how the market's able to go higher. So you know, in the past 40 minutes, I hope you'll agree it's been time well spent so far. But again, I can't cover everything I need about order flow in 45 minutes. I, I wish I could, but you know, order flow is so, is there's a lot of pieces of order flow. And again, you know, order flow is, you don't have to learn everything about order flow. There's people that just take one piece of order flow and put it into their trading, and they find their trading becomes very, very good. And 
we'll give you a special offer so you can learn much more and very fast. Um, you know, you could learn it uh, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Again, it's not something that's going to take you six months or a year to learn. You know, if, you, if you apply yourself, you can learn very quickly. And I got a special deal that, again, I've never offered this before. So what I'm going to, what I have offer you is the Orderflow Trader software. Again, it runs on the Ninja Trader trading platform, and it generates the charts you've seen in this presentation, the, full, the footprint chart, and you know the, the buy or sell zones. You know nowadays the market seems to be going away from you know uh, uh, up and down arrows to, to zones, but um, there's, there's a reason for that because you know price doesn't just turn at a particular level. Oftentimes it's within a, a tick or two. And normally I sell the Orderflow Trader by itself for just eight hundred ninety nine dollars. People say, "Why your your software is so expensive?" It's actually the reason why is because there's a lot of additional tools already programmed into this Orderflow Trader that's not available on other footprint charts. You go buy other footprint charts; it's very very basic. It just gives you, um, you know, the volume and the point of control, and some of them don't even give you the imbalances. But um, you know, the order flows trader, there's actually four other tools inside the order flows trader that it, uh, that it helps you read the order flow for you. And, you know, it's perfect for experienced traders or new traders. And why do I say both spectrums? Because for experienced traders, you know, sometimes you just want to add one or two extra tools to your tool, trading toolbox. And for new traders, it's going to help you understand the market a lot better. So, you know, the second bonus I'm going to offer you is access to the order flows trading course, which is 20 lessons, there's 15 hours of video instruction. Normally I sell this for 297 on my website every day. And that brings the value already up to almost $1,200. But again, you know, other people have been getting the software and in very good comments, you know, the order flows trader software is remarkably helpful because I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. Like for example, who's in control of the market on a very specific um, time frame, and who's getting weaker as well. You know, this is information that's available to you as a trader and you want to get it. So you got to ask yourself, what would it be worth to you if all you got were better trade entries, better exit locations, um, you know, low risk trades. You know, that's what you want. You want low risk trades. You don't want to be taking trades with big risks. And what would it be worth if it solved, you know, many of your trading problems, which is poor trading choices, where to place your stop, more importantly, prevent you from blowing out your trading accounts. You know, that that's what you should be asking yourself, not how you can make money, but how you can protect yourself in the markets. Like I said, you know, best defense, 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 you know, defense wins championships. But this, the one bonus, right, this is something, again, I haven't offered this before. This is access to the order flow's inner circle. And you know, it's closed right now to the public. I haven't let anybody in it for months. And, you know, the reason for it, because, you know, this is my inner circle where, um, you know, I work with traders, you know, I record videos for them specifically on order flow. Right now there's over 50 videos, advanced order flow training. It's just not available out there. You know, there's very limited order flow training out there. And this is, you know, someone that's had 20 years experience of trading with order flow. You know, that's what I use for my entire career. Um, you know, I'm, I'm given to you in, in the form of courses, in forms of videos. You know, each video runs between um, 40 minutes to an hour. But more importantly, the real bonus of this is you get all my current indicators plus future indicators that I release. You know, several times a year I release an indicator. I released four this year. And most recently is the uh, SNR levels. But again, you know, the only way to get into this inner circle is right now through this package. And the link is there. It's orderflows.com slash all in. And again, you know, some of these indicators, you know, these are just three of them. I mean, there's about seven or eight in there. The SNR levels I sell for, um, you know, 250. Delta candles is 200. Delta scalpers, 300. There's people every telling me they're getting 80% winners with the Delta scalper in their trading. Both those SNR levels are getting two to one winners to losers, but their risk to, to loss ratio is three to one. So imagine you're getting 60 six percent winners but your winners are three times bigger than your losers and again you know you can buy these separately um like i said you know to get each one of these you buy them separately is already about seven eight hundred dollars and there's additional five more inside there but again it runs on the ninja trader trading platform so what you're going to get is the order flows trader the trading course and access to the inner circle 
you know, that's over two thousand dollars. It's twenty one hundred dollars, twenty two hundred dollars. So you can see why it's a good deal at that price. But you know, because of investor inspiration, keep asking back. It's because you know people want to learn order flow, and a special deal flow. You get all that for just twelve fifty. But again, it's very limited time. I said you know the order, the inner circle is something. I don't let everybody. You know, I get emails. Once in a while, people saying, "Hey, can I join it?" You know, it's it's really meant for users of my software, you know, people that really want to take their trading to the next level. And you know, again, you know, the indicators you can get all the indicators that are available in there. It's best if you use Ninja Trader Seven. Some of them are available for Ninja Trader Eight already. The Order Flows Trader software is available for Ninja Trader Eight, but everything is for Ninja Trader Seven. Um, we're slowly getting things up on Ninja Trader Eight. But again, you got a 30 day guarantee. But again, you ask yourself, you know, what do you want to do? Do nothing and trade the same way as you've been, you know, all this time, still breaking even, hopefully breaking even, not losing money, or take a little bit of investment and start a transformation. So again, go to orderflows.com slash all in and you could sign up there. Now, if you stuck around to the end, I promised you my book, just email me, Mike at Orderflows with the title, get a uh, trading order flow subject line, send me your book. So I know that it's as someone's looking for the book. Again, it's Mike at orderflows.com. But again, you know, if, if you want to get the package, the Orderflows Trader software, the access to the trading course, and most importantly, the inner circle, honestly, you're not going to get this training anywhere else ever. Um, you know, to me, that alone is, is worth the price of admission. But uh, go to orderflows.com slash all in. And I think that should tie it up uh, Renee I'll just swap back to you a little bit early I think but um, thanks everybody and you know have a great weekend and have a great uh, Christmas if I don't talk to you guys